Today I'm going to show you how to process time lapses using LR Time Lapse and Lightroom. LR Time Lapse is a software that helps you process time lapses. It allows you to choose keyframes in your time lapses that you edit in Lightroom and animates them together to create a smooth transition between each one. I'm using LR Time Lapse 4.4 Pro. There are three different versions. The free demo version allows you to process time lapses with up to 400 frames. I'll put a link in the description. I'm going to navigate to my file tree here and find the time lapse I want to edit. Each time lapse must be organized into one folder. That means you must have all your files for each time lapse in separate folders. I took this time lapse in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and this is a time lapse of Hale Maumau Crater. There is a lava lake there burning up, and it's creating the smoke coming out of the crater. So this is a night to day time lapse. Once you load up your time lapse, it's going to start initializing the sequence. It's going to be reading the metadata from the files and creating previews. While you're waiting for it to load, you can scrub through the previews to see how your time lapse looks. The blue line represents the exposure of each frame. The lower the blue line on the scale, the lower the exposure. The higher it is on the scale, the brighter the exposure. Once it's finished initializing the sequence, I can press the playback button. This is being played back at 30 FPS. And you also have the option to change this to 24 FPS. Over here we have our workflow options. We have the basic workflow here and this is for processing JPEGs. The visual workflow is the one that used for raw files and this is the one I use for everything. The long-term workflow is good for more advanced day-to-night transitions but I found visual workflow actually works quite well for everything I do. I'm going to click on the keyframes wizard Automatically, it creates keyframes for my time lapse. Keyframes are the files you will edit in Lightroom. After that, LR Time Lapse can read these keyframes and create transitions so that the settings animate smoothly between each one. As you can see, there's a lot of change right here. I want a keyframe right here, and I can do that by either pressing the keyframe right here or pressing the plus button over here. I'm going to add six keyframes and that'll give me a good amount of files to work with. If I click on the save button, it's going to save the metadata to the files. I can then click on the drag to Lightroom button and drag it to the Lightroom window with library and grid view open. If you already have your files imported into Lightroom, you just need to reread the metadata. All you need to do is select all the files in grid view and going to metadata and read metadata from files. To filter out my keyframes, once they're imported into Lightroom, I can go down my filter bar. If you don't have this filter bar, you just need to enable it. I'm going to click the filters panel and find my LRT4 keyframes. This will filter out all the keyframes that I created in LR Time Lapse. I'm going to choose my first keyframe and go to the develop module. Now I can start editing. I'm going to go for a natural look for all the keyframes. Editing a time lapse is basically the same as editing a still photo. So I'm going to process this the same way I'm going to process a still photo. So I can use just about any setting over here. I can adjust all of these and the sharpen settings and the noise reduction settings and these can be keyframed in LR time lapse. Alright, once I'm happy with my settings, I can copy them 
and paste them to the picture. I'm going to right click on the picture. I'm going to copy settings. I'm going to make sure all of them are selected. Go to my next keyframe picture and paste it. So develop settings, paste settings. LR time lapse also allows you to keyframe the crop. So you can create a zoom animation or a panning animation just by cropping each keyframe. Once I finish editing my files, I'm going to go to library and grid view, and then I'm going to select all my files and go to metadata and save metadata to files. This will save the XMP metadata so that I can go back to LR time lapse and read the data. I'm going to click the reload button to load the keyframe pictures. All of the settings will be read and loaded up into LR time lapse. The next thing I can do is click Auto Transition. This will create transitions for all settings and apply them between the keyframed photos. In the preview windows, I can check on all the settings and how they were transitioned with the lines representing the change. I can choose between each setting, such as shadows, highlights, and white balance. I can now press save to apply the settings to the data. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my visual previews button and click on it. This will process the files with the Lightroom edits. So this will give you a good representation of what the final time lapse edit will look like. It also enables you to deflicker after this using the visual deflicker function. If you're happy with just the edits without any deflicker, you're good to go. All right, I'm going to check out my previews and see how it looks edited. So as you can see, it's quite a bit of flicker because there's a, there is a lot of natural flicker with the smoke coming out of the crater. And once it starts getting to daytime, it starts to get smoother. So this visual deflicker function reads the exposures from the processed files and gives a more accurate reading. I'm going to change the area that the visual deflicker will read the exposure. I'm just going to click and drag here in the central portion to get a better reading on the flicker. It's going to recalculate the visual luminance curve based on the selection I made. All right, by default, it's going to set the smoothing to 10 and that's a pretty good start and I think I want to smooth out a little bit more. I want the exposure to be a bit more gradual over here maybe a little bit less like right there so it's gonna go from night to blue hour and then to sunrise. Alright I'm gonna apply the smoothing I'm going to turn off the visual deflicker and save the files. So this will save the deflicker to the files and then I can go back to Lightroom and filter out the faux sequence, select them all and go to metadata and read metadata from files. Once all the files are done reading, I can go ahead and export my files. So I have them all selected. I'm going to go to File, Export. And I'm going to go to my LR Time Lapse Presets and choose JPEG Original. So I like to do JPEG Original because it's a good balance between file quality and space. But if I do want more file quality, I'll pick TIFF 
8-bit. I still have to create an output path, so I'm going to browse in File Explorer. I'm going to make sure that's in the right place. I'm going to navigate to my time-lapse folder and select that folder and name the sequence. It's going to create a folder and it's going to place all the JPEG files into that folder. I'm going to click export and this is going to take a while and may take longer depending on the speed of your computer. Once Lightroom finishes exporting the photos, this render video dialog comes up. Over here I can change the output path for my video. I can change the codec. I usually choose ProRes for highest quality. If I'm going to upload straight to social media, I'm going to pick MP4. Below this is the resolution settings. I'm going to pick the source resolution so that I can have my original file size to work with in Premiere and After Effects. Below that is the frame rate, and I'm going to make that 30 FPS. And I'm going to make the quality high quality, and it's actually quite good even at high settings. Color sampling is going to be at 422. And I'm going to render the video. LR Time Lapse will process it quite quickly, so you don't need to wait too long for this to happen. So that's basically how you edit a time lapse using LR Time Lapse and Lightroom. If you decide to go to the LR Time Lapse website, please use the link in my description because if you decide to buy it, it'll give me a percentage and that helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching my video and please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.